All right, so so far this has been the uh, this is the trickiest one to kind of set up here. Um, and I'm using my little hammer. Clamping it in the on the center boss that I had just machined under there. Okay, this uh, little guy has been uh, is probably the trickiest one so far. Uh, Chris asked me to. I missed it before, but uh, he asked me to touch up some of these surfaces that he had already scraped because there was a little bit of rock to them, and yes, there was. Um, so. We dusted off the other side, we flipped it over, we're down on this. I'm holding it with one clamp, and now I want to square this with the machine axis. Um, so I'm just going to get a kind of a, uh, oop. you can see it, it moves, but I can, uh, um, it will stay once I, uh, once I uh, push it around. So I'm just going to bring it in close with this square. That's actually pretty good right there. Let's give it a little, little bit of gronk there. Okay, I like that. Uh, put that away. Okay, now what I'll do, since I'm uh, probably pretty close with the indicator now, there isn't really, there's not a machine surface here. There's just one, one little spot that's been work in there that I can that I can indicate on. Oop, wrong way. Let's try that. And that's pretty oops. Falling off at that end. I think most of it it's pretty close. I don't think I'm gonna get it, it's a rough casting on the inside. You can kind of see this is what it looks like, and there's just a kind of a wear area where he, Chris was messing around with it. Um, let's uh, let's get another clamp on there. So this is the squirrely part of this. Is uh, um, I don't have a. I want to surface this whole thing, and I want to surface this, and these steps here, kind of all in one setup, would be ideal. And um, Okay, that looks pretty good. I can still get in there. But I want the clamps as far apart as I can get them. Let's make sure I... Alright, I can get a half inch tool through there. And, uh... Alright, I'm going to pin this one down. And then I'll move this one out a little bit more. Like so. Now these can't twists are pretty good, so... Alright, I'm going to call that good. Let's get this out of here. Alright, let me get a tool and then we're going to go around that surface. Alright, so I'm going to use two tools on this. I'm going to use this face mill here. I'm going to come down, calibrate. Okay, and then for the slots, I'm going to use the same 3 8 carbide end mill that I used on the other stuff there. Alright, um, the key here is going to be kind of light cuts because we're, uh, um, we got not the gnarliest clamping situation here, so... We're just looking for the highs right now. All right, let me drop down a little bit. That right, feels okay. Alright, I'll 
we definitely found the high. All right, let's drop down another couple. Cut all the way across. All right, so there's one little hollow there. I'm going to drop down a few like that. And then at the same setting, I'll jump over to the other side and dust that off. Hopefully that's not too far off of this one. And didn't quite clean up. It's got a little hollow in there. Let's uh run over there and check that other side. Okay, well, it's time to get lucky. Alright, so I'm going to come down a couple more. Do that. And hopefully that will clean us all up. Okay, so the last bit here that we have to do is we have to mill a a slot in here like that and um, I think it's just clearance for the um, what is that clearance for? Oh, uh, the lead screw nut or something um, anyway we want to make that perpendicular to something right and all we have is this rough casting but we have established uh, some good datums here flat and uh, perpendicular um, so we might as well be perpendicular to these freshly machined surfaces so what I'm going to do the slot doesn't go all the way through it just goes partially through here what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it on the uh, the vise here like this hold it down and I'm going to open the vise kind of like what you would do uh, for an ID holding job on the uh, on the mill so I gotta be a little careful, I don't want to bow it too much. Alright. So I'm feeling it as I tap on it, if I feel any vibration. Uh, you know, I might not be tall enough there. I think it might be sitting on the, uh, on the casting there. So what I'm going to do there is I'll just put a, uh, a very thin Got these thin parallels here and I'll come up uh, I can get them apart hmm. Should see how much I use those all right, I gotta separate those.
All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them on, uh, let's uh, make sure I go the right way there, um, some thin parallels under here just to kind of raise it up just a little bit so that I'm not bearing on the, uh, the vice bottom there, like so. All right, and we'll hold that down and we'll do the same thing. Get a little... Oh yeah, much better. That feels solid. <laughs> I gotta... <laughs> I'm not used to doing this. I gotta remember which way to go with the vise. Okay, that feels good. Then we're gonna um, we're gonna find the center of this, and uh, then we're gonna mill a slot in there. All right, we're just gonna do it the easy way here. It's just the casting, right? Okay, and you can, I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but I have a double line there, so I split that when I, uh, when I pick it up. So it, and you know what, let me flip it that way. Alright, same thing, I got a double line there. And then uh, the drawing, or his little sketch says one inch from either end. There's one inch. And there's one inch, so the slot goes from there to there. All right, let's go. Okay, I think we're ready. So we're gonna zero our tool. And I'm gonna come in a little bit from my finish point. So I'm zeroed, and now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna ramp in here, and you'll see that as we go along. about 75,000 there. Come back across. There's my number, 3695. Okay. And then repeat. We're gonna go down another. Now the setup seems to be pretty good, so go down to 200. Something move. Something moved on me there. Eh, maybe not. Oh, yeah, it did, I think. Okay, so a little too aggressive. It shifted a little bit, but uh, this cutter is undersized, so I think we're going to be fine. But let's uh, go a little more conservative. And. Put a little more on the uh, Mr. Vice. Okay, it's still down. All right, let's. Uh... All right. All right, let's pick up. a little more conservative. Um, 
All right, next one here, Andy Hall. And um, he is in Lynn, Massachusetts. And um, would it be possible to talk about tips and tricks with a DRO on a mill? Um, yeah, we could probably do something with that in the meatloaf episode. At some point, there's some things you can do with that. Um, so that's up here. It's a little north of Boston. Oh, we're just going to jam one in right there. And that's for Andy Hall. All right. And then we got uh, Eric Camarado. Camarado. Eric Camarado. And uh, let's see, he's uh, Manuel Chips, South Bend Lathe, uh, Kalamazoo Chuck. Uh, he's asking, how would you create the square hole for a check key? Well, I think we covered that, so. <laughs> anyway, he's in um, Madison, Mississippi, uh, which is, oh, shit, I lost that one. All right, so that's right in here. So now, Andy, notice there's some pins right near you here. Um, one of these is uh, another YouTuber, um, James Kilroy, he's here. And this one, I don't remember who this one is, but boy, that sure looks like driving distance to me. So uh, I think you guys need to get together and have a little uh, uh, a little play day down there or something. So, all right. Anyway, thanks, Eric. All right, next one here, Grant Marks. He's in Las Vegas, Nevada. Nevada. All right, there's Las Vegas. Hey, oh, second one in Nevada. Um, this is uh, Robin up here, I think, is uh, the yellow pin there. All right, thanks, Grant. All right. And then we got uh, Francis DeRost, and um, he is in um, Powell Butte, Oregon, just east of Ben Redmond area in central Oregon. Okay, so now I'm going to show you something else interesting here. Is that's like right in there somewhere. And that's another uh, YouTuber there. That's Donald Cossett out there in the middle of nowhere. So uh, anyway, uh, maybe you guys can uh, get together and have a play day. <laughs> anyway, thanks, Francis. Appreciate your comments. All right. And then we got Chuck. Um, he gets a kick out of me calling myself Mr. Wizard. Um, that's just my way of uh, checking myself when, I, uh, when I'm about to make a boo-boo. So... Uh, uh, let's see. So, okay, so this is kind of a cool place here. Uh, he lives on an island uh, in, um, uh, in Michigan. And there's a little island here that's kind of near Dearborn. And it's in Lake Erie, I guess, which is uh, appropriate here. And I can just barely see it here uh, near Dearborn. And it's called uh, Grassy, Grassy, Hill, Grassy Hill, Michigan. Uh, gross or grossy, grossy, I don't know how you pronounce it. Anyway, you're part of the club, bud. Uh, you're on an island there in, uh, in Michigan, which is pretty cool. All right. So, uh, just, um, uh, anyway, there, there's, there's a place I want to visit out there. I just don't see it right now. Um, it's, uh, I can't think of the name of it right now for some reason. <laughs> anyway, it's, a, it's an island. Uh, oh, yeah. Isle, Isle Royale National Park. I wanted to do a backpacking trip there uh, at some point. It looks like a pretty neat place uh, to go. All right. So um, next guy, we got uh, Andy. Uh, he's in Indianapolis. And uh, we got a couple. How can we pick, keep picking the same size or same color pin for some of these here? So we're going to put him in next. That's for Andy, uh, and he pointed out that uh, I had a setting wrong on some videos, uh, and he couldn't watch them on his uh, his Apple TV or something. So I switched some stuff around, and uh, he helped me out there. Anyway, thanks for the thanks for the pointer there, Andy. I appreciate that. So other guys can watch on their Apple um, products. We got uh, Glenn LeBlanc, and uh, he's been a machinist for 30 years uh, in the valve industry in southern Louisiana. Um, uh, I think videos like yours have about new machinists to switch where they, they were available when I started. Well, you, you and me both, bud. Um, anyway, uh, he's uh, in Springfield, Louisiana. And um, uh, that is near Baton Rouge, kind of east of Baton Rouge a little bit. Let's see if we can find it here. Springfield. 
Yeah, I don't see it. It was uh, kind of near near Hammond here, kind of. I think. All right, so we're gonna go right in there for Glenn. Anyway, thanks, Glenn. Appreciate the comments. All right. Okay, so here's the uh, here's the rest of these uh, gingery metal lathe uh, castings that I machined. Um, I think I mentioned earlier that uh, there was a couple things that I missed that, that Chris wanted machined. Um, anyway, I went back and, and did it and you guys saw some of that activity. <clears throat> so, let's see, that's, we did the inside of this. Uh, these surfaces here, these way surfaces. Um, I just ran a little skim along the end uh, just so he has a reference surface there. Um, this is the other one we did. Uh, we did these first, and then uh, he told me that he needed this. Uh, and this is for the tool post here. This is the compound slide here. Um, and Chris made these castings and uh, made the patterns and then um, cast them up. And he actually put uh, the gingery name in there uh, as kind of a, uh, an, an homage to, uh, to Dave Gingery. And then here's the last one. This one needed the most work here. Um, Chris had scraped these surfaces but was having a hard time. So what we did was we just kind of went back in there and, uh, and dusted this off so it's all uh, uh, parallel and nice. And then um, uh, did this surface and then did this big slot here. So anyway, that's kind of it. And uh, he can reassemble all this business. And uh, he probably wants to mess around with it anyway himself. So. Those are the castings, and uh, uh, thanks, Chris, for a uh, neat little project. And uh, um, he's actually coming over to, to uh, pick these up, so uh, we get to meet him in person.